Hi, I'm Don Jaruzewski and I am the pectus surgeon here at Mayo Clinic. I get a lot of credit for um, the results of these patients, but the reality is there's a huge team here and all of us are involved with the patients. Uh, this is for West. Hi, my name is Nina Minardi and this is Kate Schwartz. Hi. And we're two nurses here on 4 West that take care of the PACTUS patients once they get out of surgery. They come directly to us after they get um, to the PACU where they're recovering. And once they get up to us, our biggest issues with them are pain control and making sure that they're comfortable. Usually for the first 24 hours, we have them lying in bed and not moving a lot. Yeah, I think we also put them on this um, cardiac monitor, a heart monitor just to make sure that the patient's hearts haven't been irritated at all by the surgery. So we keep an eye on that for the first 24 hours. And we teach the patients how to use what we call an incentive spirometer so that they are expanding their lungs. Um, all of that requires that they be pain, relatively pain free. So again, as Nina said, comfort measures are really big. We, um, we, we know that this is a big change for people and change of their life, and so I know that there's a lot of concerns and emotions that go, go along, but as long as they're comfortable, they seem to get um, a lot further and faster. And this is where we monitor every patient's heart rhythm. You can see different patients here, and we can make sure that your rhythm stays regular and your heart rate stays normal. If anything does happen, we, we get paged by those little pagers, and we can check on you immediately. Uh, hello, my name is Arsenio Galindo Jr. I'm a registered respiratory therapist and uh, I'm the respiratory clinical specialist for the respiratory department and I perform the exercise VO2 test or cardiopulmonary stress test that you see right behind me. So we're going to go over the devices and the interfaces that you'll be hooked up when you first get into here. So um, I will start with the basic hookup. As we're going to hook you up to EKG leads or basically cardiac leads that go onto your chest. So we're able to see whether or not if you have heart pain or heart chest pressure, we're able to quantify that with an EKG, so we're able to show the physician afterwards when exactly and if exactly when it happened, and we have evidence behind that while you're doing your stress test. Uh, I'll be able to take your blood pressure during the test, so we'll do it before, pre, and then post test uh, to keep an eye on your blood pressure. Uh, one of the other tools we use is called a pulse oximeter, and what this device does is this gives me your heart rate, and it gives me the amount of uh, percentage of oxygen that you have in your blood at any given time. And this is great because pre, mid, and post test, we're getting a calculation of the percentage of blood you got running around in your system at all times. So if you happen to come in for shortness of breath and we don't know why, this can fine tune as to possibly why it could be and where during the exercise cycle. Uh, believe it or not, we've got one more piece of apparatus and that is this mask. And then as you exercise and you inhale and exhale, this machine, this pneumotech, is so sensitive that it picks up all those exhaled gases and from there it's able to calculate your cardiac function, for lack of a better word. If you're here for a pectus uh, ex excavatum test, more than likely we're going to do on an ergometer. Dr. Jaruzewski and Dr. Steadley and I have agreed that to standardize all you as patients, we're going to keep putting you on the ergometer. And so for the most part, if you're coming in for pectus, you will be on this bike or ergometer, for lack of a better word. My name is Dr. John Lynch. I'm one of the cardiologists here at the Mayo Clinic in, uh, in the Echocardiographic Laboratory. One of our senior fellows, Dr. Nisha Badia, who is uh, currently doing some research work in our Echocardiographic Laboratory as well. Our role here in the Echocardiographic Laboratory at Mayo in trying to help Dr. Jaruzewski in uh, assessing the pectus cases that she has become quite notable for in, in cardiac surgery here is to get an idea of how it's affecting the heart. We look at the size of the right ventricle. We look at whether or not there's any compression to the filling of the right side of the heart, if there's any distortion of the heart muscle. We get an idea of the filling of the heart also by looking at the inferior vena cava. And all this information goes then forward to Dr. Jaruzewski in helping her assess and plan her surgical approach for the patient. Hi, my name is Adam Duke, and I'm an echocardiographer. When you come in for an echo, you can expect to be hooked up with a few simple EKGs. And what we do is it's a non-invasive non exam where we use an ultrasound probe on your skin and image your heart. And we look at all your heart valves and chambers for the heart function and how well it works. And this information is then stored digitally and given to the cardiologist to look over 
So as we image the patient, we can see in this image here, we can look at the heart muscle and how it functions as well as the valves and how well the heart functions. And we can take measurements from these studies that are then given to the cardiologist to determine how well your heart functions for your age. I'm Dr. James Gruden from Cardiothoracic Imaging here at the uh, main reading room at the hospital. And what we're looking at is uh, CAT scans that are taken on patients uh, in order to really look at the anatomy of the chest wall and to make measurements and determinations about how to best approach uh, the abnormalities that we see surgically. So what we do is we look at these images of the anatomy of each patient in order to plan the uh, appropriate intervention uh, surgically. And we, we make certain measurements on the images uh, and determine whether there's uh, any effect on underlying structures such as the heart uh, that may be uh, in need of correction. Uh, this is an example of a CT scan from a pectus patient. And what we look at is the discrepancy in the diameter of the chest from front to back and from side to side. And what we do is we make specific measurements, as we see here, that enable us to quantify what the differences are and where they're the greatest, so whether it's uh, in the higher chest or lower chest so that we know where to surgically approach uh, the correction. And what you see here is we also look at the underlying compression on the heart because the heart is obviously in the center of the chest and can be affected to some degree when the diameter of the chest front to back is uh, not quite optimal. So we want to look at the degree of compression on the heart in each individual case as well. And what concerned me was my heart was compressed and that ultimately I was going to have more and more issues and I felt like this was something I wanted to address. And I'm very fortunate the way things worked out and I was able to um, come under your care and be at the Mayo Clinic because it did uh, really a lot more for me than I expected. It was, people say it was kind of life-changing and for me that was uh, very true. Well, initially I, I knew there was something not right with my chest. And so I ultimately got around to looking on the internet and I just Googled chest deformity. And that led me to one place and to another and ultimately found out most likely I had pectus that had not been confirmed. It was so bad, uh, gasping for air, uh, chest pains, um, heart palpitations in between workouts. Um, and then I'd, I had uh, started to get a lot of dizzy spells. Doing this procedure, after you go through all the research, it was uh, ultimately kind of, uh, was kind of a leap of faith because there was so much misinformation out there. There were so many, even qualified doctors and so forth that were telling me, you know, you know don't do this, just wait. And I had to trust in Dr. Jaruzewski and what she was telling me. I went about searching for a surgeon and uh, came down to maybe in all of North America, uh, two or maybe three names, and, uh, but it was pretty obvious to me who the right person was, and uh, that's Dr. Jaruzewski in Phoenix. You can go down a lot of different avenues, and you do have to sort through a lot of different information before you ultimately get to where you find what you think is right for you. And um, for me, that ended up being seeing Dr. Jaruzewski and going to the Mayo Clinic. And people do really well. They do wonderful. And Dr. Jaruzewski and the whole team, we're all here to care for you, and we hope you'll come and see us. Yep. Hello. Bye. Bye.